Queen of the violence he led and reveled in that day. It is a greater affliction to me than death itself that I am sentenced to die in Bolton. The nation cannot be allowed to look upon me as a sacrifice Sorry about this. Excuse for the crimes of that day, Sorry about for this which bench. I bear no responsibility. No responsibility at all. Uh, this may be a pretty lie, sir, in the halls of the royalist masters, clinking goblets and savouring beef from our hills, but it's a sour jest here among simple folk in the Fustrian. Look upon their faces hereabouts and see the grim tenor of their demeanour. See that woman there? Mistress Furrigan. She lost her husband. Jake lost his only son. I hear there there's Richard's wife befouled, then, ni then knifed in her belly by her torturers. And what of Captain Bootle? Bootle was my man. A turncoat. A renegade. <laughs> As a Stanley, you'd know about a turncoat. Is there any of your family, sir, who hath not betrayed his cause? Captain Bootle was taken prisoner and held in trust, but then brutally hewed down. No death for a captain. I tried to stop them, but their blood was up. But who could blame them? It was Asherton's troop defending the town, the very man who had threatened my good lady Charlotte, besieging Lady the House, our home. But Asherton laid not a hand on the Countess Charlotte, more's a pity, a French woman! But a Catholic, no doubt. A harlot! A harlot with her beads and bells! I'll not hear this vileness about my lady, my man! And I have never behaved other than a soldier, a gentleman, and a good Christian. What sort of soldier is it, sir, who employs a band of Irish brigands in his ranks? Fowls! Ill kept, and we've lost only for our goods and our women. Catholics to boot, every jack one of them. Traitors and helicans from the depths of Hades. Hear him! And what sort of gentleman, sir, is it that lines up townsfolk and carefully pushes a sword into every man's belly? in their families can look on. And what sort of Christian, sir, is it who makes townsfolk kneel before him, reciting palms, then hacks at the very bowels? And what is Charlotte, my wife? No more talk, Stanley. The scaffold is true. The blade is wetted, and lip trot the executioner is an expert with a scythe. He has drunk sufficient of the good landlord's ale to steady his hand and not too much to befuddle his eye. So fear not. Fear only for your soul and the price you must pay for the contentable wrongdoings you afflicted upon the benighted people of Bolton on the Moors. <laughs> the scaffold was erected at the top of Windy Bank, where Churchgate ends 60 paces west of the man and scythe door. As James Stanley, 7th Earl of Derby, was led out to his death, he shook off his jailers and walked upright to the scaffold. He had already removed his coat and outer shirt, remarking that he would like it returned to his wife the better than being unsoiled with his blood. At the scaffold, he said nothing, but his mouth was seen to be moving at all times, no doubt invoking the law to see to his family's welfare in this world and his old soul in the next. He took no ale or wine to manage his nerve, 
and faced his fate with a blank demeanor. The crowd was small, and no jeering or ribaldry attended the walk, the climb, the kneeling, the swift drive of the axe with flesh, tendon, artery, bone. As the head bumped into the basket, the crowd issued a hushed moan. Nothing more. Quickly, thereafter, everybody dispersed. Hey! hey!